Hi guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a soft cube hide in the shape of a pumpkin because, you know, it's still autumn even if Halloween is almost over. Because this tutorial requires a little more information than I can put into text and because some of you guys have been requesting I do a voiced tutorial, I thought we'd do this one a little more casual, a little more vlog styling. This is a sewing tutorial so either you're going to need a sewing machine or you can use a needle and thread. It will take a bit longer but it's perfectly doable if you don't own a machine. For the outside of the pumpkin you're going to need orange fleece and for the inside you're going to need either white fleece, yellow fleece or you can just use more orange. To make the pumpkin leaf you'll also need some green fleece or other safe fabric in green. Now I'm using a fabric that I bought probably over a year ago from Ikea that has lovely leaves on and one of the leaves it has on it actually doesn't look too far from a pumpkin leaf so I've just cut that out that is what I'm using as my leaf. You'll also need some fabric scissors and optionally you might want a bit of cardboard to make some templates that you can reuse again and again. I've got two templates for mine. I made these because I do intend on making other cubed houses in the future. The first one I have is just a 14 by 14 centimeter square and the second is a template for a doorway so I've cut this to the size that would be suitable for a Syrian dwarf and for my mouse. Fleece is a really popular safe material to use with small animals because it doesn't fray. However, if you know that your pet is a chewer of fabric, I do not personally recommend giving them fabric toys. It is completely up to you whether you take that advice or not, but that is what I always recommend. If your pet has never been tried with anything fabric before and you don't know how they'll react to it, the best thing to do is to give them something fabric during their playtime when they are fully supervised. You can keep an eye on them, see how they react to it. If they're a bit too interested, maybe err on the side of just keeping it for playtime or taking it out altogether. But if they appear to be using the toy safely and don't seem interested in chewing on it, it's probably going to be safe to go in their cage. However, just like with all toys, you should be checking them regularly regularly for damage and if you find anything that has been damaged that has been chewed on that shouldn't be chewed on i.e. fabric or plastic toys remove them from your cage whether you're using a template or not you're going to need to cut 12 squares that are 14 by 14 centimeters you want six in orange and six in white or whatever color you've chosen for the inside then we're just going to pair them up one orange with one white Once you have a nice stripy pile like this, it's time to sew each pair together. So you're just going to take one pair at a time, the white and the orange, and just sew right around the edges. With five of the six pairs sewn together, this is what they'll look like. Now I am using black stitching on the white fabric. That's just so it'll show up more easily on camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. But of course, if you're making this, you're gonna want your stitches, your thread to match the fabric you're using so it's more discreet. You can see outside of the stitches, there's a bit of excess fabric. It's a little messy looking. So I'm just gonna take my fabric scissors and we're gonna cut as close to the stitch line as possible without of course cutting the stitches themselves and just cut away all of that excess fabric and tidy them up. And there we go, nice and tidy. Now I just need to make the doorway. So we're gonna take the last pairing here, which I haven't sewn yet, and the little doorway template. And then I'm just going to mark where I want the doorway to be. Now you could cut this out first if you wanted to, 
but I'm going to be sewing the door first and then cutting it later and if you don't know what I'm talking about it'll all make sense in a moment there we go I have my doorway drawn on there so now I'm just gonna pop it through my machine and I'm gonna sew all the way around that line now I will be using a straight stitch for this one just because um, a zigzag stitch is a little big so I'm actually gonna sew just outside of that line uh, just to give myself a little leeway for making mistakes wasn't too bad. I managed to stay pretty close to the line. <laughs> See there I was saying that I'm going to try and stitch outside the line and this is why I aim to do that because I still end up on the line itself. So if I was aiming for the line I'd end up inside of it. So now I'm just going to cut out the fabric from the middle of there again cutting as close to the seam as possible. So that's what you're left with. It doesn't look too neat but we're going to fix that simply by taking the orange layer and putting it through the hole, thus turning it inside out. There we go. And then we just flatten the fabric. There you go, that's how you make a neat doorway and you could do that any shape you wanted. So just like the other pieces, we're gonna be stitching around the edge At this point in the craft, this is what you should have. Five blank pieces and one doorway. Now you're gonna need to choose a piece to be the top of your pumpkin because that's where we're gonna be sewing the leaf. Here we go, got my leaf. Uh, so I'm just gonna make it this one and all I'm gonna do is pop a couple of stitches into the center of the leaf just to hold it in place on top. If you wanted to, you could also make a stalk for this out of brown fabric. I'm just gonna leave it as a single leaf this time. There we go, just a couple of stitches in the top, you can barely see it. And the leaf is attached on there, and it's not going anywhere. I've made a little last minute decision that I want to do before we sew all these pieces together. I'm going to take three of these panels, and also I think the doorway as well. I'm going to take the base and the top and pop them aside. And we're going to be sewing just a couple of straight lines up the side of those panels, like you would see on a pumpkin, obviously <laughs> pumpkins don't have lines on them, but they have that shape to them. So we're going to try and mimic that shape in a very simplified way, just with a couple of lines. And I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm just going to mark uh, where I'm gonna put the lines. So this inside the stitching measures 12 centimeters. It might be slightly different for yours. So I'm going to make my marks at four and eight centimeters. And I'm going to do the same on the opposite side, so I've got somewhere to aim for. Four and eight. Between those two lines I'm just going to make a little dot. Try and make it as discreet as possible. There we go, it just gives me a guide to follow. That way I'll know that the lines are straight. So hopefully now you can see what I was getting at. We've got these three panels and I'm going to do the same thing to the other two side pieces and I'm also going to do it to the front piece as well. All right, so now we have our four walls, including our door, we have the base and we have the top. It is time to put all of these pieces together to make the cube. So the way you want to sew these pieces together, I'm just going to pop the door aside for a second. Uh, you want to start with your top piece. You want to take one of your walls and place it in front of the top piece or behind depending on what angle you are on. Then you want to take your other side pieces ooh, other side pieces, and place them on like that so the stripes are facing away from your leaf and then you want to take your bottom piece and place it down here and this is how we're going to sew them together to make this t-shape. We'll start with the side walls, I'm going to start with this one first so all you need to do is just fold that over the top like that, so the two orange sides are facing each other, and then you're just going to sew along that one edge. Once they're stitched together and you open them up, you can see they are joined together, they're nice and sturdy. So now we're gonna take 
the wall from the other side and fold that over and again sew along this edge here. And when you open that out, once again, join together very nicely. Take another wall, this is going to be the back of the cube, this is going to be opposite the door and then we're going to fold that over the top and sew along that edge. Unfold that. And there's what it's looking like. And you want to take your bottom panel, that's the one without any lines in it. And once again, lie it down next to the back piece, fold it over, and sew along that wall. So when this one's done, you should have that T shape. So we unfold that one, and now we have the T shape. Now next we need to sew these two walls onto the back wall. To do that, I'm going to turn it around to make this easier for you guys to see. So you've got your central piece here. We're going to fold this wall across so it's matching up with the back wall. And the one with your leaf on it is going to fold into a triangle like that. And then you're going to sew along this edge. Once that edge has been sewn, you're going to have created a kind of corner pocket like that and then you want to take the other edge and it gets a bit more tricky once you get to this bit and again sort of line it up with that back panel but as best you can and then you want to sew along that edge so before I sew it here's a quick look at how it should look like just in case you want to compare yours that edge has been sewn and once it's opened out you can see the cube shape coming together we just need to sew at the bottom on so we're going to fold this up and then pinch together those edges so they're lined up and sew that edge together. And with that sewn, you're going to repeat it on the other side, pinch together and sew along that edge. And what you'll be left with then is a cube with an open top. So there's your cube. And finally, we're going to sew on the door. So just make sure you have your leaf at the top here and that your stripes are going towards the leaf. And of course you have the white side or whatever color you've chosen for the inside facing out. And this is gonna be much like the last step. We're just going to be pinching this against the walls and sewing it along each edge. So you pinch and sew along there and then sew along there, sew along there, and finally sew along that wall as well and then it will almost, almost be finished. Okay, everything should now be sewn together. You should have this inside out cube and the very last thing you need to do to reveal the finished product is just to turn it inside out through the little doorway. And there it is, your little pumpkin hide. How cute is that? Oh, it's so adorable. Plus, if you wanted to, you could definitely sew some chains onto this and hang it from the top of your cage as a hammock. It's perfect for mice and rats, of course. Or you can just place it on the bottom of your cage if you have a hamster or another ground-dwelling animal. Like I mentioned earlier, I did use black stitches, so it would show up better on camera for you guys. But of course, when you make this, I'm sure you'll be making it with orange stitches, so they won't be quite as obvious as this. This might come in as a weird edit. I actually finished filming this video a while ago at this point, but I decided to come back to film showing you guys how to make a stalk for your pumpkin house for those who may want to make one. So all you need is a bit of brown fleece and you just cut it into a uh, triangle with no point on it this shape basically and you'll want to cut two pieces of fleece into that same shape then we're just going to sew them together I'm gonna to hand sew it with uh, probably just a simple whip stitch So there it is, I've sewn around the sides and the top, but I've left the bottom open because we're going to be turning this inside out to hide the stitching. Now you might want a little tool to do this because this is a very small piece of fabric, so it might be a bit fiddly. And then I'm just going to stuff it with shredded toilet tissue. And the reason I'm using this instead of stuffing is because on the off chance that it does get chewed into, I obviously don't want my pets getting into the fibers of stuffing. If they get into this, it's just tissue, it's completely harmless. 
and I don't have to worry about it. And once you're happy with it, all you need to do is just stitch up the bottom and then we can sew it on to the top of the pumpkin. So again, I'm just going to use a simple whip stitch just to close this up. Now, of course, the easiest time to fix the stalk to the top would be when you have these in individual pieces, but of course I've already finished mine. Uh, so it's going to make it a little more difficult, but not impossible. I'm just going to very carefully sew this to the top in the middle of the leaf and then we'll have our stalk. There we go, that's it. That's how you make a stalk. It's very easy. Of course, it's not just pumpkins you can make using this technique. I have also made a little apple house here. This was my tester house and it came out quite well. It's a little smaller than the pumpkin but it's still very, very cute. And for this one, I did make a little stalk on top, but I think both of these are super cute. And you'll definitely be seeing these turning up in my cages as the weather starts to cool down. My hamsters love snuggly places to sleep. Hopefully your hamsters do too. Otherwise uh, you've just made a really cute decor for your room, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, you enjoyed this slightly different format, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Also, let me know in the comment section down below, which do you prefer, pumpkin? or apple. Which one do you think is cuter? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you guys so much for watching. This video will probably... I think this will be going out on Halloween which means this will be the last episode of Spook Season so I hope you guys enjoyed it this year. If you haven't seen all the videos make sure you go check out the Spook Season playlist and I will see you all in November. Bye bye! <laughs>